Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to make a video about Judy in Twin Peaks. Real quick though, I wanted to let you know that I'm so excited about the upcoming Twin Peaks The Final Dossier book by Mark Frost that I've decided to do a giveaway through my Patreon account, so stick around to the end of the video to learn more about that. Also, I have to give a spoiler warning here, because this is going to be from the perspective of what we learned about Judy in the season finale of The Return, aka Season 3, so if you haven't caught up with everything, then you're not going to want to watch this video. If you heard about Judy and Firewalk with me and you haven't watched Season 3 yet, just wait until afterwards to watch this video. So Judy is a name we first heard from Philip Jeffries when we first met him in Firewalk with me. It was a really mysterious scene, so fans have been wondering exactly what David Bowie was talking about ever since. It's been the subject of many interesting theories, and there was even what seemed like some crucial details that surfaced from the Firewalk With Me revised scripts. A few years ago I write about this on the internet, but it originally came from the Twin Peaks fan magazine named Wrapped in Plastic. Basically, what they learned was that there were earlier versions of the script when Jeffries mentioned Judy, but he also mentioned that she had a sister. And remember, there was no missing pieces until much later, so a lot of this stuff was big news because the cut parts that we eventually see in the missing pieces were in the script as well. So it was a lot of stuff that came out. Anyways, Wrapped in Plastic interviewed Robert Engels, who was the co-writer of Firewalk with me, and they asked him about Judy and about some of this stuff that was in the script that nobody saw on screen. So he said, the thing behind Judy has to do with where David Bowie came from. He was down there, which he's talking about Buenos Aires, and that's where Judy is. I think Joan Chen is there, who played Josie, and I think Wyndham Earl is there. It's this idea that there are these portals around the world, and Philip Jeffries had one hell of a trip to Buenos Aires and back. He really doesn't want to talk about Judy because that reminds him of whatever happened to him. And, you know, there he's referring to the actual teleportation or whatever you want to call it. I mean, we see when he goes back to Buenos Aires that he looks like he's in a lot of pain from the journey. Anyways, when asked about Josie and if she could be the sister of Judy, Engels replied, yes, yes, I think that's true. This idea popped up again a couple of years ago when Joan Chen, who played Josie, wrote a letter to David Lynch prior to the return when they started to film it. She wrote it in character as Josie, and she was basically asking him to write her into the new story. It's really a funny thing. The Hollywood Reporter put it out, if I remember correctly, and it's really funny. She's talking about being trapped in the wood and all that kind of stuff, and she mentions that, well, because she is stuck in the wood, then maybe her sister would be in the, you know, in the upcoming season and that she could play her. And here she's referring to Judy in that same rumor that came from the revised script. In the end, though, none of that mattered because they cut those parts out. And in the final script, you know, she didn't have, a, he didn't mention any sister. Through the revisions, they also added the bit where Jeffries was with her in Seattle. That wasn't originally in there. So that led to a lot of theories of Judy being another girl that had been killed, like Laura and Teresa Banks, who were also from Washington State, near where all this stuff kind of happens. In other words, Chet Desmond disappeared when he was going to investigate the death of Teresa. And Agent Cooper went missing after investigating the death of Laura Palmer. So it was a theory that maybe Philip Jeffries disappeared when he was investigating a murdered girl named Judy. So let's look at what mentions there were of Judy, first of all, and then we'll look at what we learned in the return. For as big of a question as who Judy is has been, there are very few mentions of her before these last couple of episodes. When I asked you guys what you wanted to find out in the finale last week, who is Judy was the most repeated question by a pretty large margin. 
And all of that hype came from just a couple of different little mentions. So in 1987, just before his disappearance, Philip Jeffries went to the desk at the Palm Deluxe Hotel in Buenos Aires and asked about Miss Judy. The desk clerk gave him a letter that the young woman had left. And this is the scene that was originally cut from Firewalk with me, but we eventually saw it whenever The Missing Pieces was released in the DVD set. It's interesting because the clerk actually refers to her as a young woman, and there's an envelope that he gives to Jeffries, like a physical thing, so that's something to keep in mind. In the main Philip Jeffries scene in Firewalk With Me, when he comes to the FBI headquarters in 1989 in Philadelphia, he states to Gordon that he didn't want to talk about Judy, emphasized that she was positive about this, and that he had found something in Seattle at Judy's. This was the first time we heard the name Judy and where the whole mystery began. Later in Firewalk With Me, a monkey appears on screen and it's probably in the Black Lodge, but we can't really tell for sure because it's just a close up, but it said Judy's name. And until the return came out, that was it. There was no other mentions. Obviously, this was a Firewalk With Me introduction, so there was nothing in the original series. In season three, Evil Coop found Jeffries at the Dutchman's, which is basically the convenience store that moves around, and asked to know where Judy was and whether Jeffries and Judy had wanted something from Cooper. You remember he said, you know, why don't you want to talk about Judy? Who's Judy? And he's kind of insistent about it, but eventually Jeffries gives him some numbers, tells him that he's already met Judy, and then sends him back outside, you know, through the phone line. So we don't really find out much except for the fact that Evil Cooper has an interest in where Judy is. Then in the first half of the season finale in part 17, Gordon Cole drops the big info bomb where he tells Albert and Tammy this. For 25 years, I've kept something from you, Albert. Before he disappeared, Major Briggs shared with me and Cooper his discovery of an entity, an extreme negative force called in olden times, Jal Day. Over time, it's become Judy. Major Briggs, Cooper, and I put together a plan that could lead us to Judy, and then something happened to Major Briggs, and something happened to Cooper. Philip Jeffries, who doesn't really exist anymore, at least not in a normal sense, told me a long time ago he was onto this entity, and he disappeared. Now, the last thing Cooper told me was, if I disappear like the others, do everything you can to find me. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone, and now this thing of two Coopers. And recently, a paid informant named Ray Monroe sent a cryptic message indicating that the Cooper we met at prison is looking for coordinates. Coordinates from a certain Major Briggs. So Philip Jeffries was on to Judy before he disappeared and told Gordon about it. Judy then was discovered by Major Briggs, who collaborated with Gordon, Cole, and Cooper on a plan to contain it. So what exactly does this all mean? Well, I think Cole's description of an entity, an extreme negative force, fits pretty well into a world where we have a white lodge and a fireman that seems to be in opposition to someone or something. It's not a big stretch then to apply this idea to what we saw in episode 8. During the nuclear explosion at the Trinity test site, the experiment, or the mother who spewed forth Bob and the eggs, sure looks a lot like Judy at this point. I mean, the fireman jumped into action right away and created Laura right after seeing that on his screen. The original name Jalde is a little less clear in that it depends on how it's spelled. Most people think it's Chinese, which is a language I don't speak, and that means I'm not really qualified to say. There are plenty of theories out there that have popped up, but I can't validate any of them. In the subtitles, it's spelled phonetically, I would guess. Jalde, J-O-W-D-A-Y. I've seen two spellings in Chinese which both could make sense, but in completely different ways. J-I-A-O-D-E means screamed. So it could be like this is an entity that's negative and like a scream in the way that it cuts through things or whatever. 
J-I-A-O-D-A-I means to explain, which this is popular because people are talking about the idea that David Lynch doesn't like to explain things because when you explain something to someone, it kills the mystery. It takes away the chance to enjoy it for what it is once it's laid bare. So that, that's a popular theory that it might be that Jow Day. But either way, we don't really know. These are just things to add into <laughs> the conversation, but don't, don't really say anything for sure. Does all this mean the experiment is actually Judy? Not 100%. And the reason I say that is because Judy is a negative force that at least at one time, Philip Jeffries thought was a young woman in Buenos Aires. In that way, nothing that we saw could actually be Judy, but just be under Judy's control. What we know is that Bob came into the world at that point, at the point where she or it or whatever was vomiting during the nuclear explosion. Eggs came into the world as well, and we saw one of them hatch years later in the desert of New Mexico. We know that a moth frog creature came out of the egg and crawled into a sleeping girl's mouth. Beyond that, we know that the girl happened to be sleeping because a woodsman came into her town and repeated a hypnotic verse over the radio station she was listening to. Also have been seen hanging out around the convenience store or the Dutchman's. And when Evil Coop asked them to see Philip Jeffries, they took him to him, so... Initially, to me, it seemed like the woodsman had a connection to Evil Coop since they always showed up when he gets shot. And we knew that Evil Coop was looking for Judy since he asked Jeffries about her. We also know that he described what he was looking for as the symbol that was on the Ace of Spades he shows Daria. That symbol looks a lot like the experiment, and we see that same symbol on Hawk's map. When Frank asks Hawk about the symbol, he says, you don't ever want to know about that. And this is in the context of them talking about fire symbols, black corn, and black fire. Fire symbols being something like modern day electricity that can be good or bad based on the attention. Furthermore, the fireman, aka the giant, seems to not only be working against Judy, the experiment, the mother, or the mother of all evil, whatever you want to call this entity, but he also seems to be working against evil Coop since he's carrying Bob around with him. We know that he visited Freddy to give him the green glove and sent him to Twin Peaks, which is how we know that round of fighting was won. We know that he sent Evil Coop there, and that's what made that all possible. Really simply, Evil Coop was looking for the mother of all evil, a.k.a. Judy, but the fireman intervened to make sure he ended up finding the green-gloved hero, Freddy, instead. I mentioned in my finale recap and reaction video that I believe Sarah Palmer's strange behavior in season 3 sure looks a lot like she's been possessed by Judy, and this was brought to mind in the scene where we see her smashing the photo after Cooper saves Laura for being killed. And when you pull back from the characters that we know from the original season, it's kind of interesting to think about that. In episode 8, we saw the fireman create this golden orb that was Laura and send it to Washington, in reaction to the idea that Bob had come from the mother of all evil. So we know Sarah and we know Laura from the original run as being mother and daughter that were all tied up in this story, but it's also the same as looking at them as this golden orb and possibly the thing that spewed the Bob orb, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> because of what Gordon told us, a lot of this stuff actually falls into place. And we had the glass box in New York, which is a mystery, and there was an entity that came through there. Plus, in the, in the mob zone, we had someone knocking at the door when Nido was there and when the American girl was there. So, I don't know if we could say that any of these things are exactly Judy, but they're probably all under control of Judy, which is the mother of all evil, it is kind of the best way to describe it. There's a lot of other little clues and things and ways that are, it's tied together, but we've always looked at Bob as this embodiment of the evil that men do or whatever. And now we have something that's actually bigger and probably been around for a lot longer. So it's pretty interesting. I guess I'll stop it there. I want to hear what you guys have to think. I was doing a breakdown, but I got into this rabbit hole about Judy. So I just decided to make this video first, but there's going to be more finale stuff coming out this week. 
Also, like I said, I did launch my Patreon. I want to thank everyone who's come over there already. And I want to ask you guys again to come over as a incentive. I'm super excited about the final dossier now. Like I'm once I get done with all this finale stuff, I'm going to go back through the secret history again, because now that we know about all those inconsistencies and how they may have been from the alternate timeline or the altered timeline, I can't wait to see what we find out in the next book. So what I'm going to do is the final dossier release is the 31st of October. So everyone that signs up for my Patreon and is active on October 31st, I'm going to put all those names in a virtual bag and I'll pick one name at random and send that winner a copy of the book directly through the mail. So definitely check it out. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what else you want to learn about with these finale videos. We don't have any new episodes coming and the book's not coming out for a month, but I'm still as hyped as ever about Twin Peaks. So people who are in the Patreon will get to vote. We'll probably, I'll probably just have votes for a couple a month. I'll have to do other shows to keep views coming in, but I'll do a couple Twin Peaks videos a month that the Patreons will get to decide on. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Turn on notifications. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon.